build a timesheet app to easily track who is working on what and when, and then use that data for invoicing or reporting. Tool we'll look at in the SharePoint in Practice Toolkit is the timesheet. So the timesheet is a tool that enables you to capture time worked by your staff or your consultants and then later report on that time worked for invoicing, payroll, reporting purposes. This is something I've used a lot for internal use as a consulting firm and developed for other firms as well. There is a basic way of doing this, and then there's a bunch of add-ons, as there always is in SharePoint. The sky's the limit. So let's take a look at it. So here we have the SharePoint Practice Toolkit, Tool 3, the Timesheet. The business problem section, we talked about that already. It's especially good for consulting firms. And let's make it easy and intuitive for staff and it supports management and administrators. Let's jump over to the SharePoint in Practice site now and take a look at this timesheet app in action. And then we'll take a look at how to build it. So here it is under the tools and tool three. Notice there are four entries here. Timesheet, timesheet form in Power Apps, and there's a lookup list and there's an Excel pivot table. I want to start with the projects lookup list. So all this is a list of projects that we can build time against. So I can create a new project here. I use a project code at the beginning, so let me call this one SAM001 and sample for video. And let's say it's executing and I will save that. So this list of projects is then used in the timesheet tool. So if I go back to tool three, the timesheet, and as I said, this is a custom SharePoint list, but it's really basic. I'm going to show you in a second. So let's just click on the new button, which those of you that have taken training with me know that that's the way that we love to just see, well, what is this list store? Just click that new. You can choose to save it or not. So let's say the work date was the 9th there and the work was done by myself. And I think I'm going to build to that new project. Sound sample for video. There it is. So notice that's a lookup field, this project field. And let's say we're two hours on video recording. Then I can save this record and now it's in that list and available to us to work with. So the other method of entry here is this timesheet for Power Apps. Now I created just a very, very simple Power Apps form here. I didn't spend more than half an hour on it. So uh, Power Apps isn't my area of forte, but here it is, a very simple one where I can add, oh, it defaults to today's date. Let's say I worked three hours, the work done by, and this isn't a pretty way of displaying this work done by, but it does default to the current user. And let's say that I also worked on that sample for video project. And this was video editing now. There's an internal comments field that you can use. The idea is the internal comments is not shown to the client. Okay, so I'm gonna save that now, and I'll close this Power App window. So once we've got it entered into SharePoint, into the SharePoint list, uh, we can take a look at all kinds of different views here, of course, such as my work week. And here are the various things that I worked on this week and the count and the sum of the hours this week. Of course, this is just play data. And I can also take a look at unprocessed records. This is going to be an important concept as we dive into it. The status is new by default when we create a record. In my case, I use it for invoicing, whether I've invoiced this time record or not. It could be used for payroll or other features. Right now, the status is new or processed, but there are other ways to handle that depending on your business needs. You can set up different status. So as you probably already know, SharePoint has this great feature where we can export to Excel and we can actually leave that Excel export connected back to the SharePoint list. It's a one-way query of the list data. And that's what this Excel sheet does. So taking a look at it, I've opened it in my desktop app and it's giving me a security warning that there's external data connection. I'm gonna enable those data connections because I know it's coming from SharePoint and I trust it. And then what I can do is I can refresh. So I'll go to the data tab. It's actually the spreadsheet is set to automatically refresh, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Data, refresh all. So this will go and pull up data from the timesheet list. And 
Now I can use these data slicers and the statuses and various things to see what's up here. So when I'm managing my invoicing, I will clear this project filter and just go with status of new and I will process those records, those items from my various clients. And then I will go back to the timesheet app and set them as processed. Let's just do that now. So here we are in the timesheet app and let me say that I'm just invoiced for SAM001 project. And now I can edit this in grid view and I can say, instead of new, these are processed. And of course I can drag to fill these as well, you know about that. And then I can exit grid view. So now there's nothing else unprocessed for that filtered record. So let me re-display the process records view, unprocess records, and away we go. Okay, enough of playing with this app. Now let's take a look at how it's built. I'm jumping over to the SharePoint in Practice book now. So here's the timesheet list. So there's a main list, the web address is timesheet, and here's the description. Remember that these are set up so you, when you create this list, you can copy and paste into SharePoint when you're creating the list, as are the columns. So we copy the word work date, create a field, data type date, and set the fields with its mandatory, etc. And the description is copied in as well. So we have a date when the work was done, who did the work. So as I mentioned, this could be a choice or a user lookup. Then there's hours, which is a number, you know, how many hours were worked, any details of what work they, were, they did. And notice I use multiple lines of text. I use plain text, not rich text here. It just makes it easier to edit. If you don't need rich text, do not use it. And that's the default. And there's the choice field of status, and it does default to new. This is the default column here. Then we define the views, and this is just as you saw there in the list. And then to wrap this up, just let's take another look at the toolkit, and every section in the SharePoint of Practice in front at Build Toolkit includes this governance notes and ideas for enhancement. So governance, how do we manage the list? So make sure that if you have a lot of staff, a lot of detailed timesheets, in other words, a lot of data coming through your timesheet app, then you need to archive from time to time. So there's some, a number of ways to do this, and uh, I don't get into it in detail here, but let me know if you have any questions. Again, the SharePoint projects list, keep that list up, by, up to date by removing old records. And train people how to use the tool. I know it's simple, but usually we just produce a simple video saying this is how you use it, this look up, and use your business rules in the video. For example, you would tell people don't create timesheet entries with intervals less than 15 minutes, for example, and uh, bill internal projects to this project, for example. You know, those type of things can be built right into the videos. And then how can we improve this over time? Well, you may need additional fields for management reporting, like a category, the name of the client. Maybe there's a GL code uh, on a billable yes or no, if you're using this for internal as well as external projects. And think about an export capability you might use for QuickBooks or simply accounting. And uh, I haven't done this, but it looks really doable in a lot of ways. Uh, I'd love to do it sometime, so. Let's look at it. Use Power Apps. I've given you a quick Power Apps example, but you can also just do this in Forms and Power Automate. Keep it simple. The reason I didn't show you in Forms is because Forms, there's not an easy way to reference the project list as a lookup. So I find it to be a less interesting tool. You can also archive using Workflow, Power Automate Flows. Quick Entry View is very useful. So you could use an Excel style grid view and uh, add functionality default as many fields as possible. For example, the defaulting to the current user doesn't work in the basic form, but it does in the Power Apps. All right, I hope this video has been useful for you and you can take this timesheet and run with it. Maybe it's time to start tracking time for your staff. Thanks very much for listening and stay in touch. See comments for links and special offers.